Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about Linkin Park, and in particular, how I've become a Linkin Park fan again. And you might say, oh, wouldn't you have always listened to Linkin Park? Isn't that something that would have been in your catalogue all the time? Not necessarily. And I want to talk about why all this renewed interest in the band, now that they have a new lead singer in Emily Armstrong, has brought me back to what I loved about Linkin Park in the first place. So stick around and you may learn a thing or two about my thinking when it comes to Linkin Park. So thanks for joining me today, guys. As I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about Linkin Park. Now, first things first, yes, Linkin Park does have a new lead singer. It's not a Chester sound like, it's not a anything to do with Chester. It is a new direction. It is Emily Armstrong does not sound like Chester. It is not, she's not trying to be Chester. She's not trying to imitate Chester. And you can't replace Chester. Chester Bennington was a master vocalist in terms of the way he sang the songs that Linkin Park were in the Linkin Park catalog and how he sang any song. So you can't replace Chester. Now, on that, I think Mike and the rest of the band, I guess, wanted to not go along the lines of, we just want someone to sound like Chester, because that would have been kind of disrespectful. Um, I know there's a band out there called Hybrid Theory. I know of this. They're coming to Australia in November, I believe. I'm thinking about going to see them. But um, they sound very much like Linkin Park, and the lead singer sounds very much like Chester. And Honestly, yes, it's good for a tribute band to have a sound like Chester, but to have the official Linkin Park have a sound like Chester singing the vocals, it might be a bit disrespectful, it might be a bit too early, it might be a bit too... I mean, honestly, I'd be like, the band shouldn't even return if that was the case. But with Emily in the lead, it feels like a new Linkin Park. It feels like a rebirth of Linkin Park. It feels like, as, it, as the album's called, they have to start from zero. They have to prove to the fans, to prove to the Linkin Park fans, that they are, Emily was the right choice, and that they are still able to deliver like they used to with Chester. Now, Emily does have some controversy around her, to say the least. <laughs> I mean, there was her her acquaintances with Danny Masterson, which she has addressed on Instagram, I believe. She has mentioned that it was a wrong choice to do that and to stand by him during the court case, knowing what we know about him now. And I think that was the right choice for her to come out and address that publicly. Now, obviously, she does have beliefs uh, or was aligned with a certain church. I'm not going to go too much into that. But I'm of the belief that, you know what? Someone's religious beliefs aren't going to sway me. I mean, I'm still going to go out and watch... Where is it here? There it is over here. I'm still going to watch Mission Impossible, you know? It's like someone's religious beliefs are not going to sway me. All I care about is the sound or the artistic vision. That's all I care about. Does it sound good? Does it work? Does Emily gel with the band? And The Emptiness Machine, I'm kind of optimistic it was it was a really good song but i'm one of the fans that kind of fell off after meteora and i still listen to lincoln park here and there but i got back into it after chester's untimely leaving us you know i got back into it after that i didn't get to see lincoln park play live which i'm very i'm very like you know i wish i could have seen him play live in terms of with chester but during, during the era where uh, they were playing live in Australia, I was not going to concerts during that era. I did not go to a lot of concerts. For about 10 years, I didn't go to a concert. There was a gap from about 2010 to about 2018 where I didn't go to one concert. I didn't go to any. So I missed out on seeing Linkin Park live, the lineup, the original lineup with Chester. And it kind of gives me hope that this new lineup will similarly do justice to the music you know it's all about the music at the end of the day and people say but Chester it's not with Chester they shouldn't have even bought the band back it shouldn't have been called Linkin Park 
I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. They may have called it something else. I mean, I mean Fort Minor, Mike has Fort Minor, and we're still waiting to hear what's going to happen with Fort Minor. Like, you know, there is a lot of other ways to go about it. But to not call it Lincoln Park would have been... I mean, look, you can take Lincoln Park's, all of Lincoln Park's original aspects, take it across to another band like Fort Minor, but it's still going to be, oh, Fort Minor, that's Lincoln Park. You know? And I think a lot of fans would have just been annoyed about, oh, well, you're just trying to move on from Chester and, like, trying to erase Chester. And that's what would have been the complaints with the fan base then. But yes, uh, when I'm talking about getting back into Lincoln Park, when the band announced the reuniting of the group and we have a new lead singer in Emily, I was kind of, like, I was already listening to Lincoln Park a lot by that point because I didn't really listen to them for the longest time. I was here and there. I think I, think I fell off kind of after Meteora and Collision, Collision Course, the one that you with Jay-Z. And when I think about it, I still listen to like Burn It Down and when they released all these other hits throughout the years, I still check them out. It's not like I just stopped listening to Linkin Park, but I wasn't necessarily listening to the albums in full. And when they announced the new lead singer, I've went back now and kind of started listening to them again. I went out to, a, I went out to two CD shops in Sydney. I went out to Red Eye Records. I went out to Utopia in town. And I picked up Hybrid Theory and Meteora. And you might say, oh, why did you have to buy them brand new? I mean, I paid, I paid a pretty penny for these. I think they were like 25, 20 bucks each or something. And you might say, oh, well, that's, how did you spend that much? Because I like good music. And I wanted these. I'm going to open these and have a copy of them that I can play and listen to and completely offline. But it reminded me, what I loved about Lincoln Park in the first place when this new reunion thing happened. I loved the vocals of Chester. And back in that era when Lincoln Park first dropped, I wasn't ready for their lyrics. I wasn't ready. I mean, I liked the music. I mean, everyone loves the music. I loved the songs. But back then, you know, I would have been into One Step Closer and stuff like that. And then as time's going on, as I've got older, as I've kind of grown... You get into songs like Crawling and In The End and, you know, so many songs where Chester puts so much emotion into uh, the lead vocals. And, you know, you hear you hear certain aspects in there and, you know, you don't notice that when you're younger. So you can kind of feel that Chester's still there on those records. And, yes, I know, I know what people are going to say. Oh, why are you talking about Lincoln Park? Because... I'm, my, I'm one of the returning fans, you know, I'm one of the people who weren't there all the time, who kind of fell off off the Meteora, who kind of still checked them out, but wasn't necessarily the biggest fan. I'm, I'm very similar with Korn, where I'm a massive Korn fan, but I fell off after, I think, uh, Take a Look in the Mirror, and I know there was a 2007 album there, uh, See You on the Other Side, and that's kind of the last album I bought of Korn, where I kind of was a full-time listener to them. But, you know, I still check out Korn throughout the years. It's not like I've just dropped off Korn and said, no more listening to Korn. I just, I just chose the taste of the music wasn't necessarily what I was into at the time. And I've come back around now to where I listen to more to Korn, but the initial six to seven albums. And, you know, when your music tastes are developing, when you're a teenager and so on, you kind of... You don't understand the full scope of the music being made, especially when it's something as deep as like hybrid theory, where it's like every song on this album, you know, you can have songs like Point of Authority. You can have songs like, what's another good one on here? Paper Cut, like even Paper Cut, like you don't understand the full scope of those songs. Yes, it sounds pretty catchy. Like the music, Linkin Park is known for catchy sort of hooks and the lyrics are another thing that kind of go even deeper if you look into them, like, especially with Chester. And I am, once again, a Linkin Park fan. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, welcome back to the community. And some people will say, oh, what are you even doing coming back? You're just, you're such a hypocrite. Well, yeah, okay, I get it. But, look, Linkin Park is something I'm more and more connecting with now in terms of musically, in terms of what I'm listening to. The reason I went out and bought the two CDs was because I was listening to these 
over and over and over and over and over again. I've probably played Hybrid Theory about 10 times in the past week. And Meteora I've probably played about 5 times. Just because I'm remembering, I'm remembering what I loved about the band. I'm remembering, like, the madly vocalist in Chester. I'm, rem I'm remembering the gelling of Mike and Chester on stage of just, like, or in the booth, like, where they kind of, you know, I'm just remembering what I loved about them. And, yes, they've got a new lead singer. Emily does have a bit of controversy around her. Whether she's the right or wrong lead singer remains to be seen. I want to see the album before I make any judgment on that. I want to see what she does on her own tracks. Because at the moment, she is singing songs that were written by and for Chester's vocals. And... I want to see what she does with her own music, with the ones that complement her voice, rather than her performing Chester's songs. And I want to see what she does with that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> no. At the end of the day, I have confidence in Mike and the band. I have confidence that they have chosen the lead singer for a reason. They have heard something that th we haven't heard yet, I believe. And... I've watched a few YouTube videos of the performances they've been doing in LA and around America at the moment. I think they're also going to do one in London coming up. Um, I'm going to be watching a lot of YouTube clips to see how she sounds live. I mean, there are aspects where she's like, okay, she's different to Chester, but also I don't want her to be Chester. I don't want her to try to sound like Chester. I don't want her to perform like Chester. I want her to be something different because you can't replace Chester. And also... As I said, Hybrid Theory is coming out to Australia in November, and I am really trying to get Saturday tickets. Saturday tickets sold out, and you know I got back into Hybrid, I got back into Lincoln Park and Hybrid Theory and Meteora after the reunion. So now when I looked up uh, Hybrid Theory touring, the Saturday tickets are sold out, and there's a Sunday show, but I want to go to the Saturday show, so I'm trying to get tickets to that show because Hybrid Theory, the band, do sound very similar to Chester and the original Lincoln Park lineup, and. They're probably the best tribute band to that original Lincoln Park lineup. But that's the thing, you can have a tribute band. You can have someone who resembles Chester's voice. You can have that. And Hybrid Theories, the Hybrid Theory band are just that. They complement what originally was there. Without parodying it too much or disrespecting it. They do it just to that's the point of a cover. But yeah, if they if they brought the lead singer for Hybrid Theory, the Hybrid Theory band, into Linkin Park, it would have been a tad disrespectful, I think. You can't replace Chester. And that's the thing I, un I like about where their band are going now. Yes, Emily might not be the best choice. I get it. I will admit that. I don't know yet if how she sounds on a record, how she sounds on Linkin Park original record. I don't understand how. I don't understand how she will sound when that comes out, but I am optimistic. I want to see that, and I'll make my judgment then whether I want to continue listening to the newer stuff or just stick with link, stick with the original albums. But yeah, we need to remember, guys. Chester, Chester was an icon, and you can't replace Chester. Yes, we can have someone who sounds like him. We can have. Someone who can do the exact performance like Hybrid Theory do. You can have all this stuff. But what's missing is the deep emotional vocals that Chester delivered. And only Chester could deliver from lift experiences. And yeah, that's what I've really gotten into from Hybrid Theory. And listening to Hybrid Theory and Meteora again. Like you really hear in stuff like Somewhere I Belong, for example. You hear like, you hear Chester kind of remembering back to experiences he's had or like feeling it in with emotion and that's something that I want to see if Emily delivers but you know I'm I'm waiting to see how the new album comes out from zero I'm waiting to see how that does and yeah she has to it's good that she's come out and addressed the controversy it's good that she's addressed it and, you know, her religious beliefs aren't going to sway me in any way. I'm still going to watch John Travolta movies. I'm still going to watch Tom Cruise movies. I'm still going to watch whatever. Her religious beliefs are none of my business. And all I care about is the art. Does it sound good? Does she sing the songs all right? Are the new songs complementing her voice and 
do they gel well with Linkin Park? And, you know, some, some, um, some bands have to go through stuff like this. And it's not always a death that brings it on. Like, obviously, Black Sabbath had to go through something where Ozzy Osbourne was on a different path to what the band was. Obviously, Ozzy went out and done Blizzard of Oz. Or, I don't know, is that the first album? I think Blizzard of Oz was the first album. And then they had Ronnie James Dio come in to do Black Sabbath. And it was a different taste, a different flavor to Black Sabbath. But Black Sabbath gelled with Ronnie James Dio. And it worked. And I'm waiting to see if that's a similar thing. And now, obviously, you know, Bon Scott as well with ACDC. Like, there's a lot of different scenarios where the lead singer has passed away or left us earlier or so on. Where I think a lot of people will look at Nirvana and look at stuff like that as like, okay, well, without the lead singer, the band shouldn't be brought back. But, yes, and yeah, I know everything going on with Dave Grill at the moment. So I know everything going on. I've been following the news. But, you know, people will say stuff like Nirvana, like, oh, you know, you can't bring back Nirvana because Kurt Cobain was so influential and so much ingrained in that band, as is Chester in Linkin Park. But I am just happy that the music is back. It's good to see Mike happy again. Like, and Mike's been happy here and there, but, like, getting back into a Linkin Park space and doing Linkin Park music, I think Chester once said a quote where... He talked about the personalities in the band and how he feels that it shouldn't just be one thing or like, yes, it's sad that Chester's not here to see it. It's very freaking sad that Chester's not here to see it. It is, you know, it is what it is. But if, you know, if you want to, if you want to hear Chester, Chester's still here, guys. He's still on these albums. He's still, he's still right there. I can listen to him at a second's notice on this CD. I can still go out and buy Linkin Park CDs. I can still go out and watch all the live performances on YouTube or pick up the DVDs or there are so many ways to still experience and watch Chester and support Chester and still feel connection. But I still want to see what happens with the new Linkin Park. I don't think, I think the internet's been kind of unfair to Linkin Park at the moment and we haven't even heard a new album. We're judging it based on, okay, Emily singing the back catalogue of Chester. We haven't heard original music. And I have faith in the band that they've heard the album and probably are like, yep, this is a Linkin Park album. This is something that the fans will love. This is something that... Look, Linkin Park get it right more than not. They get it right a lot of the time. And I think with Linkin Park, I want to see more. I want to see where this goes. I want to see... I want to see if Emily is the right fit. And I'm sure if she's not the right fit, I'm sure, you know, there'll be some point in which the band admits it or the band talks about it. But I think I have faith in the band. I have faith in the remaining members of the band. I have faith in their ear. I have faith in their taste for what is Linkin Park. We are fans <laughs> judging Linkin Park, but, you know, as I said, I'm a fan who... Have, has rejoined the bandwagon and has jumped back on now that they're back. And yes, it's without Chester. And I'm very freaking sad that I didn't get to watch Chester in concert. I'm very sad about that. And yes, Chester is iconic. And I think all this hatred towards Emily, I don't think Chester would want that. I would think Chester would want the band to essentially grow and for his legacy in terms of what he worked on for so many years to remain and grow and be bigger than ever imagine imagine when Lincoln Park in 10 years if Emily is the right choice if Emily is the one that takes it to the next level I imagine Chester will be looking down and saying yep good job guys you're keeping the music alive and people who discover Lincoln Park through Emily's music will say okay I want to go back and listen to the older stuff and they will discover Chester so yeah, guys, I am, I'm just happy that Lincoln Park's back and it doesn't have to be the right choice. It doesn't have to be the wrong choice. I don't, I don't care. I'm just happy that a band that was a part of my teenage years and formatively, formative years is back. And yeah, it's without Chester, but it is still, in my view, Lincoln Park because a lot of the original aspects are still there. There's one big original aspect that's not still there, but... I believe, I believe, yeah, they've wait, they've been very respectful of waiting and they've been very respectful of the fans. They haven't, 
the, from the performance I've seen on YouTube, Emily is doing justice to the fans and she's really trying to respect the fans. By crawling, she is, I don't think she's singing the original, the first hook of, uh, the first chorus of crawling and she's letting the fans sing that. Like there are certain things where, certain verses where Emily will just point the mic at the fans and say, okay guys, I want you to sing. Like this is your song. But yeah, I would go to a Linkin Park concert if they came out to Australia. I would go to it. I want to see Linkin Park and experience that music. I also want to see Hybrid Theory. So Hybrid Theory band. So, you know, there are so, there's so many ways to experience Linkin Park's music. But at the end of this video, I just want to say one more thing. Rest in peace, Chester. We all love you. We, you did some of the best music ever. And the stuff you worked on with Hybrid Theory and Meteora and all the other so albums afterwards. Sorry, I fell off after a while. Collision Course was probably the last one I really picked up back in the day and listened to, but I am, I hope that the legacy of Linkin Park goes on and preserves and makes your legacy even bigger. And, you know, Nirvana, when Kurt Cobain passed, you know, based on where Nirvana was and where Nirvana is right now, Nirvana got about 10 times bigger after Kurt Cobain left us. So, the music can get bigger and you know as the Foo Fighters and all that stuff happened obviously the music kept getting bigger because people wanted to see where Dave Grohl came from and go back to Nirvana and experience it so I hope Linkin Park is bigger than ever I hope the fans get to experience it I hope that the music is better I oh not better but I hope the music is new fresh not trying to be Chester I hope it is different and I don't want a I don't want someone to come in and try to beat Chester. We can't get Chester back. He's irreplaceable. He was one of a kind. But I'm optimistic of the new direction. And that's all I want to say. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, yeah, let me know. If, are you excited to see Linkin Park back? Are you one of the fans who are like, it shouldn't have been brought back at all without Chester? Are you angry that they chose Emily? Like, there are a lot of different camps online when it regards Linkin Park at the moment. and. Let me know in the comments, guys. Chuck a like down there and subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'll try to get back to you, some of you. Rest in peace, Chester. Love everything you've done for music. Rest in peace. Um, I hope Lincoln Park continues to grow and continues to respect your legacy. Peace.